as the self-proclaimed professor of patchouli, today we're learning fragrance notes. Acting as a follow-up to our highest rated fragrances of Fragrantica, today I thought I'd do an interesting video where I rate the highest rated fragrances for each fragrance note, allowing you guys to learn about fragrance notes while at the same time seeing what the best fragrances are out there to experience these ingredients. This should hopefully be a shorter video after our 40 minute buying guide bonanza of Mansara. So let's get started. So first up, we have the note of iris, which is a floral note, which is technically not a flower. Actually in natural perfumery, it's um, extracted from the root of the iris plant. It usually has this very creamy, powdery, almost lipstick makeup bag smell to it, making this a note that can be very challenging to wear in men's perfumery. So you're gonna go for iris fragrances when you want something that's more different and creative. Prada's L'Homme Intense. By the way, this is not discontinued. You can still find it on Prada's official website and it's readily available in the UK at least. It's got a rating of 4.45 out of five. Absolutely stunning. The iris is just fantastic in this fragrance. Dark, elegant, and sophisticated. This oozes class and sophistication, smelling incredibly intoxicating and sexy. I do honestly believe that Prada L'Homme Intense deserves that rating. This is probably the best iris fragrance in the designer market, maybe tying with Dior Homme Parfum, but this is more easy to wear. This, if you notice, has the iris note, which um, usually is gonna be found more clean and uh, more, more in daily sense for men's fragrances, but this is gonna be a nighttime fragrance. It has supporting notes from uh, amber, patchouli, sandalwood, which are all very warm notes. And then it adds more elegance with the leather. So overall, you're getting a very long lasting, warm, inviting, and elegant iris fragrance. It is a challenging note for sure. So this is gonna be a fragrance you try before you buy, but if you have some experience with fragrances, this is something you need to try out and experience. Also, I just find this is like the perfect rainy day weather fragrance to wear. The note of tobacco, which is gonna be a traditional note you find in oriental style of perfumery. So you're gonna get a smoky, sweet, warm effect from tobacco fragrances. Sometimes they can be very realistic and it's gonna be a challenging note a lot of the times that needs to be balanced well with other supporting characters. So tobacco fragrances can be polarizing, but if it's done right, they're one of the sexiest to wear, usually nighttime. Zergioff's Naxos. Zergioff Naxos has 4.5 out of five. This is an extremely approachable tobacco fragrance. Okay, Zergioff is a tricky house, but this is their best offering. Long lasting, compliment getting, unisex cold weather fragrance. An all time great, simply one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled. When you come to niche perfumery and you want the highest level of perfumery out there, Zergioff is your brand to go to. When I went to them and I uh, went and tried their stuff, this is easily the most uh, friendly, beginner friendly fragrance that they have. It is elegance in a bottle. Honestly, if you just wanna be like the best smelling person in a room for a special occasion, this is the fragrance you wear. It's difficult to wear this as a casual, in a casual outfit like this. Honestly, it just doesn't do it justice. This does tobacco perfectly. As I was saying before, you need something to support the smoky ashiness that can come from tobacco. This balances the intense tobacco with soft honey, fresh lavender, and it's got these a white floral and citrus notes to balance it out and make it really bright. So overall, just a perfect down the middle of the road tobacco fragrance that smells extremely elegant. It's not too sweet, it's not too fresh, it's not too ashy. <laughs> it's just like perfectly done. Honestly, a masterclass in perfumery. I don't know how they did this. Fantastic performance, 10 hours longevity with a moderate amount of projection. Numero tres, the note of oud. Oud, along with iris, is one of the most expensive perfume ingredients in the world, coming at around $50,000 per kilo, eye-wateringly expensive. It comes from a rare plant um, that obviously humans are pushing to extinction that is very hard to extract, but it produces one of the best smells in the world. Not an easy smell, can be very challenging. Oud can come in a lot of different varieties based on where in the world it comes in, and it can smell very smooth, woody, complex, rich, and perfect. It can also smell very animalic, barnyard, stinky as well. It can be very challenging. And of course there's synthetic oud because the ingredient is so expensive and it's going extinct. 
you get a lot of uh, brands and houses these days just recreating it through some synthetic woody uh, molecules. So most brands, if you're not spending at least 150 pounds or you know, $200 around that range, you're not gonna be getting real oud most of the time. I think it's unlikely because of how expensive it is. That means carved oud. 4.53 out of five. This is Tom Ford's oud wood, but refined to absolute perfection. An amazing, amazing entrance into oud fragrances. I can't stop smelling my wrist. If you enjoy Tom Ford's oud wood, you will love carved oud. I will agree with most reviews. This is a shameless clone of Thomas Fordigan's oud wood. However, I do think this is superior to Oud Wood. It's a bit frustrating for some people when they see a clone house or a clone fragrance being the same price as the original. However, bear in mind there aren't really any good clones of Oud Wood apart from this. And this is actually higher quality and longer lasting. It is the Tom Ford Oud Wood DNA made smoother, a bit closer to the skin, longer lasting. It probably has a tiny bit of real oud in here. I think it's still going to be mostly synthetic oud, just like oud wood, but it definitely smells higher quality. And I think they have more of a slight Middle Eastern twist on this DNA with a slight incense note in here. But most of all, it's oud wood. It's the DNA you know and love. Very sharp, smoky green, absolutely gorgeous, fresh, and easy to wear as a compliment garnering signature. You'd wear this as a versatile scent in the autumn, winter, and spring. So it's still very versatile, great value for money. I think this is fantastic and deserves a really high rating. I've said before, this is gonna be one of my fragrances for life. If I had to choose between Oud Wood and this, I'd go for Carved Oud. Quattro, cardamom, the spicy note that most men love. It is a complex note that can give a an oriental fragrance sort of feel. It's a multifaceted fragrance note. It gives a earthy and fresh, but also sweet and warm facet to any fragrance. Usually gonna be an oriental fragrance or a date night fragrance. It makes any man smell incredibly sexy. It's one of the best notes in perfumery, in my opinion. Le Mal Le Parfum, 4.46 out of five. It's very underwhelming. I expected more. I don't smell the original in this one. The original was a masterpiece. This is far from a masterpiece. My first pickup in the Lamal range, and I'm very happy with my selection. Warm, spicy, and sweet. This thing projects like a beast, lasts forever, and is 100% my most complimented fragrance. Now, Lamal Le Parfum, I actually, I think, is very close to being a perfect fragrance. I did not like it at first when I first tried it. I still think I prefer the original Lamal to this. I feel like this is the more grown-up, more modern, and more romantic cousin to the original Lamal. It does cardamom very well making a seductive and inviting fragrance that still performs really good. I get maybe eight to 10 hours with a moderate amount of projection, which is very impressive for a fragrance that I would consider still a date night fragrance. Overall, just a great evening fragrance in general. The cardamom is supported by the more heady and substantial ambery, woody and lavender notes, just similar to the original Le Mal, actually. I think objectively this is a better fragrance to Le Mal, although I still <laughs> prefer it subjectively. I think it's definitely worth getting this, definitely worth trying. It's a very safe, beginner-friendly cardamom scent. Just bear in mind that the ambery notes can smell a little bit animalic in the opening of this. Number five, lavender. Lavender is a very common fragrance note in men's perfumery. It's technically a flower, but overall the plant is seen as a different family in perfumery called the aromatic. So if someone says a fragrance smells aromatic, it generally originates from lavender and it's gonna smell like a fresh fragrance. You want lavender in your perfumes because most men like to smell clean and fresh. And even when it's a sweet perfume, the lavender definitely gives much needed balance like we just saw in Le Mal Le Parfum. One of my favorite notes in perfumery and it created the traditional Fougere family in fragrances like Le Mal, but more traditionally, it would be your grandpa's shaving um, splash lotion like, such as Brut, uh, which is a classic example. Zaharoff Signature Pour On, 4.38 out of five. This is a refined and balanced woody aromatic with a barbershop vibe. A smooth, spicy scent with sweet undertones. A pleasant woody lavender combo. It won't knock your socks off, but it's a pleasing scent. I really like what Zaharoff created here. I think some of the reviewers got it spot on. They went with an aromatic fougere vibe, your barbershop scent, clean, soapy, fresh, easy to wear and it injected a lot of personality with a lot of Middle Eastern notes. So notes like myrrh, which is very sweet, ambery, elegant. Other notes like oud in here as well, incense. 
So these kind of notes usually don't work with a soapy lavender scent. So I give this fragrance big props to being extremely creative. It may not blow your socks off, but it's gonna be a very solid fragrance. If you want an easy to wear, unique signature, no one else is gonna smell like this that lasts all day long. It's not too loud. It's gonna be a softer projecting 10 hours longevity uh, fragrance that is clean, professional, mature, creative, very good house, very creative stuff. I feel like a man who finds himself regularly wearing suits would wear something like this. Finally, the notes of patchouli, one of my favorite notes in perfumery. It's extremely safe to wear on your skin, extremely long lasting, dark, earthy, green, sweet. The best fragrances that exist will, are gonna have patchouli in them. It's a very easy perfume note to wear, to use for perfumers, so they like to use it a lot. It's in a lot of fragrance families. It creates very iconic, dark scents. So if you want a dark fragrance with a lot of creativity, personality, patchouli is a note you want to look out for. Parfum de Marley's Carlisle. 4.42 out of 5. There is something about this. I don't know what it is, but it's very addicting. This fragrance is mind-opening. Very unique to say the least. What a deliciously gourmand, mesmerizingly complex, warm and cozy and performs like an absolute beast. One of my favorites from the Parfum de Marley house definitely deserves that rating. This is the grown up next level version of Leighton that people should go for. Leighton has an apple pie vibe to it, so does this, but this is much darker. Hence why we're reviewing it. It has the darker essence of the patchouli notes always there. It's also very sharp, spicy with nutmeg and apple. Initially, very delicious, very, very gourmand-like, edible, but it's definitely very sexy. If Leighton is Superman, this is Batman. And as it dries down, it carries on being very smooth. It has the florals, just like Leighton. Smooth tonka bean florals with the rose, and the vanilla gets more and more intense. But throughout, it stays dark. Dark, intense, loud is what this fragrance is. If you want a head turner, extremely luxurious, expensive smelling wintertime fragrance, I think its main drawback is it's going to be primarily cold weather, the coldest of weather because it's so intense. So a lack of versatility, but the perfumery is masterful here. And I hope you guys enjoyed that video. What did you guys think? I tried to mix fragrance notes with traditional fragrance releases so that there's a good mixture of content. Would you guys like to see me just focus purely on fragrance notes in a future video? Or would you like to see me just focus purely on fragrance releases. Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know guys, out of the six notes that I uh, discussed here, and of course we can discuss more notes in later videos, what do you guys think are the best? What do you think are the best iris fragrances, best oud, best patchouli? Let us know guys, it'll be interesting to hear your opinion. Make sure to check out our previous video on the highest rated Fragrantica fragrances. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.